Is this real life? Or is this fantasy? Well, obviously it's fantasy because this game is Fantasy Zone. Now, if you go back on my channel to April 17th, 2013, I did a video titled PGRF High Score Challenge Fantasy Zone, which this was the NES version of the game, and I was trying to get a high score on the Pete's Game Room forum, which is a forum created by YouTuber Pete Dore. Members of the forum used to have these challenges, and I did this one. I thought I did well at it, and it was really fun to do. Of course, I know I didn't win or anything, but like I said, it was fun. You gotta have fun playing video games, because if you don't have fun, then why the fuck are you playing video games? Well, I decided it was time for me to review Fantasy Zone, and I want to start out the review with the arcade version of the game, and then I want to talk about the NES port. Fantasy Zone was developed and published by Sega, and it was released in the arcade in 1986, and it was ported to quite a few consoles, including the NES, Sega Saturn, Sega Master System, TurboGrafx-16, Sega Game Gear, MSX, and the Sharp X68000. The story behind the game has you in the space year of 1422. The Fantasy Zone is a solar system consisted of eight bright-colored planets. Although these planets are in trouble. The evil Mennons are trying to take over the planets by using a foreign currency to build their forces. It is your job to recover all the coins, save the solar system, and kick some Mennons' ass. Fantasy Zone is an arcade shoot 'em up but not your typical top-down view shooter. This time it's a 2D side-scroller. Kind of like Gradius, except in this game you can go forwards and backwards. At the end of each level, there is a boss battle that you have to defeat to move on to the next planet. One thing I like about this game is how you can buy improvements for your ship. You get them when you start a level. You will see a balloon that floats around that says shop on it. You touch it with your ship, and you can buy better weapons, faster engines, and so on. Although the bad thing about that, the power-ups don't last forever. I know many will get mad at that. Oh, that's not fair! I actually don't mind it. It adds to the challenge of the game. To buy power-ups, the enemies will drop money, or coins, or gold, or whatever the hell you want to call it. And when you defeat a boss, a ton of money goes shooting out of the boss, which is really cool. Also, you can buy multiple power-ups, but you can only use one at a time, which is kind of interesting. It would be kind of nice if if you could switch during gameplay, but you can't. The graphics for Fantasy Zone in the arcade are damn good. Very bright colors, very good animations. I mean, there are bright colors out the ass, and that is what makes it really nice. Plus, this being an arcade game, that kind of gives developers that wanted to make their games colorful back in the day to pretty much go crazy with it. And that's really cool. The enemies look nice, the bosses are cool, some of these enemies are just goofy looking, but that is what makes this game awesome. The developers, when they created these characters, they kind of made off-the-wall enemies, and that is just perfect. We need more games like that, even to this day. There is no glitching, which is definitely a plus. There are no slowdowns. Sega did a badass job on this game. The music and sound effects are pretty damn good. I love the music. It's very well composed. It's not awful. It's kind of what you expect in an arcade game. It's upbeat and happy, and that's always nice. The sound effects are good, too, from the sounds of the explosions, the shooting, and everything else. It's just very well done. If you're expecting Fantasy Zone to be a simple game, it's not. It definitely has some difficulty behind it, especially when you get swarmed by enemies, and then there's bullets all over the place. And I love the challenge. Sure, it can be frustrating sometimes, but that's the way it goes. It's definitely playable. You just have to be quick on your movement. And of course, the power-ups will help you out a ton, but you just have to be quick with using them, because like I said, they do have a limit on them. The controls for Fantasy Zone are good, but they have a flaw or two. Now, playing this on MAME, at times it felt like the controls were a little slow at responding. For instance, if I wanted to go a certain way, and it would move me the other way. That is definitely frustrating, but it's not something that breaks the game or anything like that for me. I can tolerate it. Fantasy Zone is awesome, a very well done side-scrolling shoot 'em up The gameplay is fun, the graphics are great, the music and sound effects are awesome, the difficulty is nice, the controls are good, but they have a flaw here and there. The game is just a blast to play, and you don't hear a ton of people talking about Fantasy Zone, especially when the topic of side-scrolling shoot 'em ups are mentioned. At least I don't hear it much, but either way, the game kicks a lot of ass, and I definitely enjoy playing it. Now, like I said at the beginning of the review, I want to talk about the NES port of Fantasy Zone, which was developed by Sega and published by Tengen. It was released on the NES in 1989. Now, there's actually two different versions of the game on the NES. Well, the NES slash Famicom. The Famicom version is developed by Sunsoft. The NES version I'm reviewing is an unlicensed version. As you know the story, Tengen released unlicensed games on the NES, and that is why a Sega game was on a Nintendo console. Now, in this review on the NES port of Fantasy Zone, I'm going to just focus on the graphics, music, and sound effects and of course the controls as it's pretty much the same game.
The graphics for the NES port are nice, but have some flaws. First of all, the game is limited to 8-bit graphics, and there's nothing wrong with that. I totally understand that, and they do look good. The big problem is the game glitches at times and flickers. Now, of course, there's a lot going on, but at the same time, it can be frustrating with all the flickering and glitches. The game is colorful, it's nice bright colors, so there isn't a ton to complain about when it comes to the graphics. It could be a lot worse than this. Now, I got a question. Why are these dudes flipping me off? Oh, wait. Oh, they're just giving me the thumbs up. At first, I thought they were giving me the middle finger. I was gonna kick their ass. The music and sound effects are great. Nice 8-bit music, well composed, not sloppy. I find it to get stuck in my head, which is always cool. Although, I wonder why this game doesn't have any music during the title screen. That kind of surprises me a bit. The sound effects are nice, nothing mind-blowing, but good for what the game is. The controls this time around, I think, are a little bit better. They seem faster than normal, they respond quicker, at least I think so, and I don't have that issue with going one way and it's trying to send me the other. Personally, I like them more than the arcade version. Fantasy Zone on the NES is very good. Just as good as the arcade version, except it's limited down to 8-bit graphics. Personally, I enjoy it just as much as the arcade version. I think the graphics are nice, although there is the flickering and glitching issue. The music and sound effects are great. The controls are good. The gameplay is just as fun. I could spend hours playing this game. Sega did a badass job on this game. If you want to play the arcade version of Fantasy Zone, you need to get the arcade emulator MAME, and of course, download the ROMs for the game and check it out. If you want a physical copy of the NES port, the game is 43% rare, so you might be able to find it out there at a local game store. Although on eBay it's a little pricey, $22.99, $19.95, which isn't bad, but a complete in-box copy is going for $41.24, $51.95, and I think I've seen one on there for $75. And then there's a factory sealed copy for $149.99. To me, that's ridiculous as hell. There are some Famicom versions on there going for $12.95, $10.95, and I think there was one on there for $15.95. So if you want the Famicom port of the game, you can get that too. Personally, if you like side-scrolling shoot-em-ups and you like games that have bright colors, check out Fantasy Zone. It's very much worth it. Now, the Fantasy Zone series has quite a few games in it, including Fantasy Zone 2, Fantasy Zone The Maze, Super Fantasy Zone, and even a remake on the PlayStation 2 that has some nice updates to the graphics, which I will definitely have to check out at a later time. And then there's an unreleased TurboGrafx CD game called Space Fantasy Zone that is a mixture of Fantasy Zone and Space Harrier. At a later time, I will definitely review that game, because for one, it's unreleased, and two, I think it could be an interesting game. Anyways, that is it for this review of Fantasy Zone. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.